health was sort of a big topic throughout the year, and really it is. You ever wonder, I've, I've, been, I've been all around the world, you ever wonder why certain people live longer than others? You know, and you're like, maybe it's just genetic. I, I, don't, I don't know about that. I think there's some def definitely some things going on uh, that we can learn from. And there's a fabulous new series on Amazon Prime talking about health. You can also watch it online if you want, so we'll tell you how to watch that. But I have with me the, uh, the filmmaker of the Amazon Prime series, uh, and he's also the CEO of the Oasis of Hope Health Center. So we're going to give you some really good inside information on things that will help you. And it doesn't matter if you're talking, you know, a degenerative disease, you know, cancer, things like that, or a virus like COVID. There are things you need to know. So we're going to have a good dialogue about that today. But to set it up, I want to show you uh, the trailer for the docu-series, again, that is on Amazon Prime and that you can watch online if you don't have Prime. And I'll tell you how to do that in a bit. And then we'll have a great conversation with the CEO, Daniel Kennedy. Watch this. Life expectancy in America is 78.6 years. But the healthy life expectancy is only 68.5 years. The last 10 years of life are spent dealing with sickness, pain, and crushing medical bills. 90% of all the medical care dollars that are spent are spent in the last year of life. The economy here in North America is buckling under increasing health care expenses. Most women believe that breast cancer is a genetic thing. Genetics may, you know, load the gun, but it's really the environment, the, the, our diet and lifestyle that pulls the trigger. Unhealthy diet is the, one of the top risk factors for the global burden of disease. What an embarrassment it is to think in the West, we have built this billion dollar uh, industry around an illness. You've got a 50-50% chance of having cancer at some point in your lifetime. Unhealthy diet is associated to heart disease, is associated to cancer. Obesity, heart disease, cancer and diabetes are skyrocketing. The good news is that it doesn't have to be that way. Our bodies were created to actually be well and healthy. Where can answers be found? Who knows the truth? What are the keys to living a healthy, long life? I think we're right at the point now, maybe, we're going to create a, a revolution. This revolution is never going to come about from a pill or a drug. The seismic revolution in health is going to come about when we in the profession have the will and the grit and the determination to share with the public the nutritional literacy that will empower them to be the locus of control to annihilate chronic illness. In your time, you're gonna heal. Give yourself grace. Whatever you love, do it. Choice, not chance, determines destiny. Healthy Long Life, want one? It's a journey around the world to experience. A celebration of cultures. Music and dance. Culinary arts. Science and medicine. Cancer survivor stories. And ancient healing traditions. Healthy Long Life. That is the series that's on Amazon Prime right now. And, you know, we all want a long life. But a healthy long life, that is really the ultimate. Welcome, Daniel Kennedy, to Life Today Live. Good to have you, Daniel. Randy, I just have a lot of love and appreciation for your family. Uh, starting back with your parents in 1998 was the first time I got to pray with them for the healing of people that have cancer. And your dad had such a fervent faith, powerful prayer. And I'll always remember him for just joining me on that. You know, uh, prayer is obviously, I think, key. I think, you know, we were talking before about the, the 
impact of Oral Roberts University. Of course, I'm a graduate there, but we, we talk about body, mind, and spirit. But I honestly, I, 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 I'm baffled how so many of us, and I've been guilty of this, have said a prayer and, and then put total garbage into my body and ask God to bless that. It's kind of like, really? God's going, I've, I've given you all these other things and you're, you're doing that to yourself and then asking me to, to bless it. What do we need to know and what are you exploring in, in the Healthy Long Life docuseries that uh, maybe we're just not aware of that will, that will help us? Well, yeah, there's a number of assumptions about health uh, that are wrong. And our medical model in the United States is a reactive one. We wait till we get sick, we go to a doctor, the doctor prescribes us some kind of medication, and normally we get better. That happens from childhood, you know, all the way through life. And so we don't have a mentality of being healthy. We have a mentality of getting well after mm -hmm. getting sick. And so that, you know, model needs to change. Uh, science and medicine have made incredible uh, contributions in the area of healthcare, but see, medicine doesn't promote health. Medicine fights disease. It's not like if you're healthy, you're gonna take pills to get more healthy, right? You take pills when you get sick. So medicine has its place. If you have an infection that leads to pneumonia in your lungs, and you could die from pneumonia if you don't take the antibiotics. So the antibiotics will fight back the disease, but you're not gonna come out with better and stronger lungs. And so one of the things I set out uh, to look for is, how do we not just live longer? Because medicine has helped us increase our life expectancy over the last couple hundred years by 10 years. So now life expectancy, if you're born today in the US, you can look forward to living up to 80 years, but the healthy life expectancy, which is measured by the CDC and the World Health Organization in the United States is 10 years less. It's like 68.6 years which means that the last 10 years of your life, you are spent uh, living in sickness, pain, and crushing medical bills. And I lived that with my father who passed away two years of uh, congestive heart failure, but I was seeing the medical model in the US uh, fail my family. And it goes to another assumption, which is, you know, cancer. It's a matter of fate. Either you have the genes and you're gonna get cancer or you don't. And it looked like that, you know, if you look at my family profile, uh, you would say, oh, cancer runs in his family, poor guy. My grandmother, when I was only eight years old, grandmother Kennedy died of ovarian cancer. She had three children, my dad, the middle child, uh, my uncle Roger and my aunt Patricia. Roger was the eldest, he died of pancreatic cancer. My dad had renal or kidney cancer plus skin cancer plus a mass in his lung, but he died of heart failure. And my aunt just died two uh, years ago of stage four uh, melanoma cancer. Uh, my dad and my uh, uncle, they had five children all between us, myself, my sister and three cousins. Out of the five, one already has cancer, but praise the Lord, he's doing you know, really, really well. So it'd be easy to come to the assumption, well, in the Kennedy family, cancer runs in the family, and I didn't want to accept that. So I went around the world talking to top experts to say, is there something that I can do to not live a long, sick life, but to live a healthy, long life? And I was blown away by how much there is science and also ancient healing traditions that can help you live a healthy long life, but we don't have access to that information. And so I wanted to be this bridge from the academic research to you in the household. And that's what healthy long life does. It gives you information that is actionable and that can really help you override bad genes. You know, here, Randy, this is a really important fact, and it's even published on the American Cancer Society website, but it's published by the NCI and all these research institutes. All types of cancers put together, would you guess what the percentage are that are, are caused by genes? 
I mean, this is gonna blow you away, Randy. Yeah, no idea. Only 10% of all cancers total are caused by genes. Mm -hmm. Why that's so exciting to me is because that means there are things that we can do to change that, that pattern of cancer in our family. One of the things that one of the, I don't know if it was a doctor, I think it was a doctor in the trailer said that, that kind of jumped out at me was that, that uh, genetically, um, you know, that our genes will load the gun, but it's, it's our diet and lifestyle that pull the trigger. Um, I mean, I think we all know that one of my, well, I won't, I won't mention the name of the chain, but you know, there's a, there's a fried chicken chain uh, that has the best f deep fried chicken and, and French fries in the world. And I actually quit eating that. It's been almost, I don't know, 20 years, pretty close to 20 years now. Um, oh goodness. Be because I, I got some information like what you're, you're giving people and realize, you know, I, that's just not worth it. H how much, how much, I mean, I know diet's huge, but talk about diet and lifestyle, what that means. Uh, that, that yeah, it really means everything, everything. Randy. Mm -hmm. um, and by the way, I'm having a guest appearance of my <laughs> daughter's dog, Macy, because this is called pet therapy. Okay. Uh, there's actually science that talks about how pets help you live a healthy, long life. But he's such a love bug, and so there's no way I can do the interview without him because <laughs> okay. he insisted. We wanted to be on camera. Yeah, uh, we're dog friendly. That's yeah. it. So. Yeah, but when you know when you talk about lifestyle and, and nutrition, uh, it was Dr. Michael Greger. You know, he's the author of How Not to Die, one of the top selling books. Uh, you know, obviously on the New York Times bestseller list. But this this doctor is a genius. And his inspiration started from seeing his mother uh, who had heart disease go to the Pritikin Center that only used diet and lifestyle. And she uh, was scheduled for open heart surgery but didn't need it just because of diet, diet and lifestyle. So let me give you an example. And quitting those fried foods like you did, you know, is absolutely giving you more health. Uh, but my personal goal and maybe you might share this with me and everyone who's watching might share this. You know, my goal is to live well without taking pills. And so in my late 40s, the doctors, you know, started wanting to put me on things like Lipitor for cholesterol and all kinds of pills. And I decided, you know, it's time to really, really be disciplined. And I started living a life eating a mostly plant-based whole food diet. And when I do that, when I'm being my best self and I'm eating the foods the way God put them on earth, not the way man packages them, processes them, and refines them, um, all of my markers that you would look at, like a BMI, the body mass index, the cholesterol, triglycerides, and glucose are all in the normal range, and I don't have to take one pill. Guess what? That also saves me money, <laughs> which is really good. Because the most expensive thing that you can possibly do is get sick. Uh, and, and there's another expert that says like 90% of your healthcare dollars are spent in the last year of life. Um, well, there's different studies that, that point to different numbers. Um, but like in the area of bankruptcy, you know, when uh, President Obama was trying to uh, pass the Affordable Care Act, he was showing the studies that said that 80% of bankruptcies involve medical bills. Um, but even on the studies that are the most conservative, they still say that 30% of all bankruptcies list medical expenses. Now, this is even if you have insurance, because insurance, most of them are capitated. They have a cap. They don't pay for everything or just the co-pays. If you have an ongoing cardiovascular disease or diabetes, your, your out-of-pocket is going to break the bank. The least expensive thing you can do is to stay healthy and diet and lifestyle are the way to do it. Dr. Greger said, you know, lifestyle is uh, what pulls the trigger. So yeah, you might have genes, you might have oncogenes. Those are cancer mutated genes that put you in a high risk uh, for cancer. But uh, like Dr. Uh, Francisco Contreras brings out, 
he's an oncologist, right, at my hospital, Waste of Hope, that uh, out of all the women who have breast cancer, only 5% have the breast cancer gene, BRCA1 or BRCA2. That's incredible to me. Yeah, it so is. It is. It's, it's empowering. A, it, yeah, and, and also it'd be good to know if you had that, but uh, good to just avoid it altogether. I'm curious, when you say lifestyle, I, I think most people, at least I hear, exercise. Is it, is it just exercise or is it more than that? Okay, well, on my list of like priorities, number one, quit smoking. Absolutely. And smoking is related to most types of cancer. Number two, try to eat God made. You cut way, 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 way back on oil. Try not to cook with oil. You know, I like my my vegetables to be uh, cooked. I can do that without oil. And if it if you have an issue with sticking to the pan, because uh, you don't want to use Teflon, which is heavy, cut, um, you know, chemicals, you can just put a little bit of vegetable broth in there and you'll get plenty of favor. But oil in every form is really what's causing um, you to gain weight and the hardening of arteries and the, you know, cardiovascular disease. Um, even even like way back, don't add any sugar to anything. Foods have sugar naturally. Yeah. Yeah, on the oil, um, on the oil, let me... You know, that's hit, really important. Let me hit you real quick on the oil, because I had heard that, that olive oil is actually good for you, and coconut oil is a good sub, you know, substitute to cook with. It. Are you saying, are you advising against the, the olive or the coconut oil? Yeah, so let me answer that two ways. Um, in Healthy Long Life, one of our episodes uh, goes out to the olive orchards in Sardinia, which is the longevity uh, capital of the world, mm. and they're eating olive oil. But their quantities are so uh, limited. But on the other extreme, here in the United States, you have uh, people like from the Cleveland Clinic, Dr. Codwell Esselstyn is speaking, and he says, avoid all oil, coconut oil, safflower oil, olive oil, it's still oil. And so in my life now for the anecdotal, just what's happening in my life, when I cook without oil, even olive oil, my cholesterol drops, my glucose, my blood sugar drops as a result, uh, my triglycerides drop. And so even though olive oil is a tremendous source of polyphenols, which can uh, you know, combat all types of disease, there's better ways to get that that are not going to affect your uh, heart. So yeah. I'm not a fan of any type of oil, but I love it. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> olive oil tastes so good on right. everything. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you there. OK, uh, we're talking to Daniel Kennedy, who is the uh, filmmaker of a docuseries called Healthy Long Life. I want to show you the website here. HealthyLongLife.com. You can watch that on Amazon Prime or you can go to HealthyLongLife.com. And then if you click right there on the. Uh, uh, episodes up at the top. You can watch them online, so you don't have to have Amazon Prime. Uh, it's just easier in front of your TV if you got it. He's also the CEO of Oasis of Hope Health Center, which he alluded to. Uh, and we're talking about how not just to live long, but how to live healthy and long. And uh, Judy, by the way, glad you're feeling better and back at home resting. I'm going to ask him your question about pork in a minute. Um, uh, you, you mentioned God made versus man made. And I think I know what you mean, but just for clarity, <laughs> tell people what you mean by that. You know what's amazing about God made is it's what's on the tree. You pull it right off and you don't have to cook it. You don't need spices. You all maybe just a quick wash, right? But an apple is complete in itself. It's delicious. Strawberries, anything that you don't have to really prepare or do additives. So man-made foods are things that come in any kind of box, uh, any kind of package. They're all processed. And through the process, uh, you know, many chemicals are used for preservatives and they're not fresh. So God put us in a garden. I think that's really, really important. And he said, you know, the fruit of the trees are for food. And I'll expand that. I, I think, you know, it was really, here's my little guy making an appearance again. Um, I think he was talking about all plants, uh, not just the trees, but things that were growing out of the ground as well. And I think it's amazing because the first thing God did was uh, to tell Adam, take good care of this garden. Why? Because not only was that our nourishment, but that was God's pharmacy for us. So that's what I mean by uh, God made. 
when I think about God's love for us, you know, if I had been the creator, boy, we would have all suffered because I probably would have made our fuel for our bodies some kind of toothpaste kind of gray substance, you know, so, hey, it's just to give them power, give them energy. But God, he said, you know, I'm going to keep them healthy by providing all the nutrients in these foods that will turn genes, good genes on and turn bad genes off. It's all in the food. But then he took it one step further. He said, I love my uh, uh, children so much. I want to wow them and excite their taste buds. And so I'm going to make things of all different colors and flavors and textures, and I'll put them in different regions of the world so they can go explore and, and discover it. And, you know, there's like hundreds of types of uh, bananas, even though the market only gives us uh, one or two choices. That's something that I learned in Healthy Long Life filming as I went around the world, the variety that's out there. And that all came from the mind and the heart of God because he wanted us to enjoy what does a kiwi taste like and what nutrition does it bring into us? What does broccoli, you know, taste like and what nutrition does it bring us? And so if you just try, I mean, try to do like the 80-20, 80% 20, God made, 20% not God made. Hopefully one day you'll you'll get over to where it's more like a 95% God made. I, I'm, I'm not afraid to have some cheats here and there. Uh, you know, it's what I'm doing every single day yeah. uh, over and over again, which has power. Uh, Dr. Scott Stahl talks about the power of the plate because it's the only thing that you're putting into your body three times a day. And we're putting a lot of that stuff into our mm -hmm. minds. Yep. All right. Uh, real quick on the meats. You mentioned that you're uh, you all vegetables are primarily vegetables, uh, but you know God made cows too. I'm just pointing that out. Um, but one thing I did is I quit eating pork uh, at the same time, as well as shellfish. Anything that's a bottom feeder that feeds on dead flesh. Uh, caveat. Most of the pork is farm fed, so they're not feeding on the dead flesh, like the shrimp in the ocean are. But what 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 uh, is your uh, what's your view on on just the meats in general? Well, Randy, you sound so Old Testament, quitting the stuff that God said don't eat. It's prohibited. Uh, first, let me start off to say I love the smell of burnt meat. I love you know a good burger. Who doesn't? And I and think about it, you know, God loves a great barbecue. <laughs> and I'm joking because it, you know the sacrifices of the old system. Gone all, <laughs> he could have gone all vegetarian on on what we were supposed to sacrifice to him in old testament time, but he's like, hey, put some rocks together, throw uh, not the shrimp on the barbie, but <laughs> throw some meat on there and burn it. And the fragrance was so good to God. So he loves barbecue. You know, but I love uh, my uncle, Dr. Contreras' teaching on, on meats and especially pork, you know, because he says, look, lots of New Testament Christians are going to say Peter had the dream and this sheet came down with all of this, you know, ungodly food. And, and Peter was told, don't, don't call what God has made pure, impure. And he said, well, okay, maybe spiritually pork is not going to take you to hell. It could take you to heaven a lot sooner. <laughs> if you want to live a healthy, long life, cut way back on the meat products and the dairy. Why? Because they're high in fat. So, you know, I talked about oil, but fat coming from uh, animal and protein increases the production of a protein called NF-kappa B. And NF-kappa B is the protein in your body that stimulates inflammation. And so we need NF-kappa B so that if you have an infection and you need inflammation, the immune response is what's causing that inflammation. You deal with the infection, you move on in life, but you don't wanna have inflammation all the time. And so the overproduction of NF-kappa B is caused by meat products, dairy products, more than anything else. Whereas vegetables will actually inhibit the production of NF-kappa B. And so it's scientific, it's not an opinion, it's what science has repeated over and over again. 
And I'm hoping that my docu-series, Healthy Long Life, just gives you a little nudge in the right direction. Now, talking about me and the longevity capital of the world, if we go to Sardinia, where there are more men over the age of 100 years still working in the fields, they do eat meat. In fact, the Sardinian delicacy is a baby pig roasted. But here's the thing. They only eat that at weddings and they only eat meat in very small quantities a couple of times a month. So if you know, I were really to take away the message from Sardinia, it's everything in moderation. And that is a big, big challenge because look at the foods that are served to us in the US. You know, they, they give you this plate that should feed a family of four, but it's an individual platter. He's going to go see his yep. mama. So okay. say goodbye to Macy. <laughs> All right. All right. You, you do realize it's, it's Taco Tuesday today, just for the record. So I, it's, I'm Taco it's Taco Tuesday. It's Taco Tuesday. I'm having this conversation. I'm going, hmm, I don't know. So, but. All right. Well, I'm, I'm you know, living in Mexico. I have a month. Well, I'm working in Mexico now, living in San Diego. So we are the taco inventors, right? Mm -hmm. It's crazy. But in my town of Tijuana, there's this. Uh, change over every taco maker now has a vegetarian taco mm. so the demand to eat healthy has even affected the taco uh, line so taco Tuesday does not mean meat but here here's a little tip okay. say you're gonna have five small street tacos great do three veggies and two meat you just cut down by 80% your meat consumption good point I mean, let's be real, Randy. Yeah, yeah. no, that's a good point. And I, I, you are you are West Coast. Here in Texas, it's still pretty meat heavy. But I do get, I do get the chicken tacos. All right, we have to hit something <laughs> real soon with, with Daniel Kennedy. And I want to show you the website again because there's something I want to point out. It is right there, healthylonglife.com. You have that uh, green button, free vitamin D3, zinc, recipe app, and more. And I know you're working with Dr. Eric Naputi, who we had a great response to, to him. The My attitude towards COVID, uh, that it, it's, it's evolved some, but is that I'm probably not going to be able to avoid being exposed to it at some point. I can cut that down. A mask cuts it down a little bit. That's good. Distance is obviously good. And you just stay out of people's faces. But the number one thing, in my opinion, you tell me if I'm right or wrong, is that if I will maintain as much health in my own body, which is why I, I, I've been taking that D3 and zinc every day since Dr. Napoli was on the show. And I've been yes. taking a lot, quite a bit before that, but I, I bumped it up a notch. My view has been that if I can keep myself at a high level of health, that when I am inevitably exposed to COVID or any other virus, I will have a much better chance of fighting it off so that it is either a milder case or, you know, asymptomatic. Am I thinking in the right direction? Yeah, you are spot on. And uh, when our documentary series was going to be released on Amazon Prime, God impressed on my heart that we were just put on the first shelter in place order by Gavin Newsom in California. And I understood that, hey, for my uh, docu-series to really get the attention of people, I need to address what the world is going through. And so I reached out to my experts again, like Dr. Michael Greger, I talked to Dr. Hans Deal, to Dr. Delia Garcia, to Dr. Um, uh, Michael Clapper, Dr. T. Colin Campbell, all these experts. And I said, could you talk to me about COVID-19? And that's how I got involved with uh, Dr. Eric Naputi as well, because of all the work that he's doing to help people either prevent or recover better. And they brought out very important points. The CDC is really talking about hand washing, about being sheltered in place, social distancing, uh, and wearing a mask. And all of those things can help. And you know what's amazing is because we're doing so much of that, the incidence of cold and flu is down as well, because anything viral is going to benefit from hand washing. But what's not being talked about as much as I think it should, and, and here's a great chance for your viewers and your listeners to hear this, is that the people that do get COVID-19 that don't do well 
are people that have comorbidities. What does that mean? A comorbidity is when you have one, well, I'm sorry, two or more illnesses going on at the same time. So you could have COVID-19 and diabetes, you won't do as well. COVID-19 and heart disease. And so again, this puts you in a place of empowerment because understanding that it boils down to if you can work through diet, exercise, stress management, rest, hydration, to get as healthy as possible and lower the comorbidity in your life, you will do better uh, if you get COVID-19. That's why some people are doing so much better because they are in good health in general. But then Dr. Eric Naputi brings out the other part of the equation that's so important. And he points to studies that say, that the majority of people that don't do well when they have COVID-19 have a deficiency of vitamin D3 and zinc. And the reality is in the United States, and I know this from Oasis of Hope, because even for our cancer patients, Dr. Contreras is giving vitamin D3 and zinc because across the board in America, we're not getting enough of it. Uh, and, you know, D3 is produced when you're in the sun, you need to get more sun and, and we're locked away in our computers, especially when we're sheltered in place. So over 77% of Americans have a deficiency in vitamin D3 and the number similar in zinc. And so when Eric Naputi uh, told me, Daniel, I'll partner with you and I will make available to your viewers of the documentary free zinc and D3. Three, I jumped on it and I put a button there on healthylonglife.com. Like you can get it for free. So, you know, do it because the science says you will fare better, but it's not just the supplements alone. It really is the lifestyle. And so I'm, I'm so excited for everyone to watch the docu-series because it is going to share so much information that you can do at home to help yourself get healthy. Daniel, I appreciate everything that you're doing. I appreciate the information you're, you're bringing to us and uh, just the hope. Because, you know, the biggest thing, I, I, the one of the biggest hits we've taken in, in 2020 and now leading into 2021 is the loss of hope. And when you tell people, you know what, you can take control of your life and you can have a healthier, a longer life and here's how to do it. You're not just giving people information. You're, you're giving us hope and an action plan. And, and I just want to say thank you for that. Is there anything you want to say before I let you go? Well, we're partnering right now with Dr. Uh, Eric and soon, you know, if you get that vitamin D3 and zinc, later you're going to get information. But we're making a master class step by step. Just here's what to do to get healthy. And so I'm excited about that. But at the beginning of this uh, time together, Randy, you mentioned prayer and the power of prayer. Mm -hmm. And what I wanted to, to share with you is in, in many situations, you may hear a doctor say, you know, if somebody's facing COVID, well, the only thing we can do now is prayer. And so in most um, medical facilities, prayer is like the last line yeah. of defense. Wow. But with Dr. Contreras and the work we do at Oasis of Hope, we have a pastor on staff. We do praise and worship and prayer time and devotions every day with our cancer patients because uh, prayer at Oasis of Hope is the first line of defense, not the last resort, because prayer has supernatural power, but it also has natural power. And there's plenty of studies that talk about how it's just like a great relaxation technique that can help bolster your immune system. And so if you'd let me, Randy, I'd like to just say a five second, well, probably 10 second prayer. You go as long as you want. Father God, today, just joining with Randy and all the viewers and listeners, we just pray for divine health to come upon this nation and for healing to come upon the United States and around the world. And, and I know that that comes through your divine intervention and by the wounds of Jesus Christ, but it also comes through the teachings you gave us on biblical health principles and give us the strength to do the right thing because most of us know in our hearts what we should be doing and what we shouldn't. And I thank you because you loved us enough to give us a health message. And I thank you because you provided me the opportunity to go around the world and film Healthy Long Life and share it with people for free. Thank you, Lord Jesus, 
for the health that's coming today to households <laughs> across America. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Daniel, thank you so much. Uh, thank you guys for joining with us. Share this. If you haven't subscribed or followed, do that now. And check out the website, healthylonglife.com. If you got Amazon Prime, go find it now and watch it there. If you don't, just go to the website and you can watch the episodes there. And don't forget your button right there for the free vitamin D3 and zinc, which I've been taking every day. You do have to pay for shipping and handling. I'll tell you that up front. Uh, but it's still cheaper than going to the store. I checked that out. <laughs> <laughs> so take control of your health. You can live healthier and you can live longer. And Daniel will show you how to do it. Thanks for being with us. We will see you next time here on Life Today Live. Awesome.